course one is the basic and uh, next one is the advanced and it's our privilege to have with us an expert dr pranjal kumar for concert is a professor of practice of waxen university hyderabad a certified mentor and an international certified accreditation and ranking trainer so now i would like to request dr fokan sir to kindly deliver our presentation over to you sir yeah uh, very good evening to all of you uh, today is the last session and today we will be covering on intellectual property rights because the last two days we have discussed mostly on the new education policy uh, in terms of uh, research in terms of uh, entrepreneurship today we'll be discussing in terms of intellectual property uh, so in this uh, particular session uh, i know that it is a very uh, vast uh, subject but i will be uh, i will be trying to accommodate both basics and advanced part of the ipr and uh, post this session today i will be circulating the uh, ppt slides of three days session to uh, dr midal ghosh and he will then circulate to all uh, concerned and based on that uh, we can have some discussions later on with the management of your college uh, to uh, imply, means implement uh, this uh, important objectives of new education policy so let me first uh, Uh, share my screen so this already we have discussed uh, uh two days back then we have discussed uh, we'll just uh, slide move to that particular slide which we discussed yesterday and that was on entrepreneurship and we talk of about uh, entrepreneurship self reliant atmanirbhar bharat uh, what are the characteristic of an entrepreneur how an institution through nep 2.0 can formulate uh, the structure basic structure for imbibing entrepreneur and innovative mindset among the uh, students among the researchers and among the faculty members so today we are having this uh, uh, another session uh, the last session which is on intellectual property rights for this we need to understand why this intellectual property rights is so important in terms not only for the academic institutions but also for the industries at par- at large and why that the reason the government is also trying to focus on mse micro and small enterprise and startups that they should be uh, they should be trying to have their ideas uh, uh patented or copyrighted because intellectual property rights uh, if i say then it's basically can be defined in terms of it is an intangible asset to you there is no physical existence can happen in this particular property it is similar to your tangible assets like land Uh, your uh, means all the capital assets land building home your means jewelry so all these things it can be sold it can be licensed uh, it gives you an a competitive advantage when you are a patented researcher or if you are an industry person or business owner having patent of your product it also gives added value to your business uh, better market opportunities and obviously you will have the global recognitions and with you actually our country is also having getting the global recognition so why it's important in academics basically because academics as i know they are uh, they are basically for teaching learning and research that is called tlr and academic institutions are comprises of researchers faculty members and students so this ipr is specifically important to be understood by researchers and faculty members because we know that we will also discuss what are the types of copyrights uh, sorry types of intellectual property rights it consists of patent 
uh, which consists of copyrights, geographical identifications, trademarks, trade secrets, and many other things. So by definition, basically, this is something that a product of human intellect, okay, which involves an application of human reasoning and intelligence. So how it happened, basically, the importance of IPR came into picture when the developed economies like the United States of America, China, Japan, and European Union intellectual property rights, they are at the forefront as per 2015 WIPO, that is Wall Intellectual Property Right Office. Uh, indicate uh, they have indicated this WIP office has indicated this wall intellectual property indicators. So that from that way, basically IPR is set with a different setting factor. So it is the most important factor for any academic institutions in, in any part of the globe because it is a different setting factor which differentiate it's uh, the, the academic institution from the others. So we in India, we have to be competitive. As I said yesterday, we need to be high performing in Indians. So that's the reason there are many policies, many frameworks like NEP 2.0, Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, and now we are seeing uh, G20 India presidency. So everywhere, it is the focus is basically that we should be having the research which are applied form of research so that it can get uh, cited most and it can also uh, get, be, can be patented. To some of the examples of IPR, if I say it is the identity of an, an organization or it may be an identity of an individual also, like Uber, Uber has a logo, which is unique. So it is an identity of their business. Same thing with, we are having, we can see in Ola, Indian Railways, and many others like Metro, IP leaders, all the startup group. So their logos are their identity and popularity are manifested like Bata. So if you see that logo Bata, then we can just recapitulate our experience of having the Bata product with us. So that's the reason the IPR examples, if you continue, then it has also the uniqueness, innovativeness, the designs, it consists of logos, it also comes under trademark. The peculiar shape of the bottle of Coca-Cola, Pepsi, these are also part of the trademarks and packaging way they are the things are being packed. So it helps basically to distinguish product and services of same nature, which are produced by different brands. So similarly, IPA also helps in distinguishing the researchers from the other researcher who are also doing the same research, but the IPR, the person or researcher who has got the patent. He's, he or she is obviously at par uh, with the global uh, uh, global level or global benchmarking. And he and she, he or she can differentiate her, the himself or herself from others because they have the patent for their research. Now we are coming to what are the types of intellectual property. Basically, it is broadly uh, intellectual property of two types. One is called copyright, another is called industrial property. So copyrights, obviously, we all know in the academic institutions when we publish a paper or we publish a book, we publish some uh, something which is of the artistic form, then we do the copywriting. So Indian Copyright Act 1957, it provides uh, the safeguard to all those things like original literary works, dramatic, musical, artistic work, cinematograph films, and sound recordings. So copyrights basically into existence uh, when as soon as the musical piece or artistic or any article is penned out. So the copyright, you can start with the copywriting for these activities. And there's a fact that copyright does not protect the ideas. And therefore several people can develop musical piece or they can develop novels, they can develop the script on the same topic, but one should be different from the other in terms of the execution of the idea only. So it does not protect your idea. Please you should be very clear that by copywriting, you should not think that my idea is copyrighted. My idea cannot be copyrighted. My execution or how I'm executing the idea can be copyrighted. Like slogans, names, taglines, and for our product identification or business identifications are not being protected under copyright. And for this, we need to have trademark law. So suppose in case an author or writer writes something 
and it is being published by publisher, the ownership does not pass on the publisher by default. So ownership of the article penned down by the author only in case the same has been assigned to the publisher. So means copyright will be yours. It, publishers may be publishing your, uh, your literary works, but publishers doesn't have the copyright. It can only happen if you pass on the copyright, uh, your right copyright to the publisher. So for this, uh, like assigning of the writing should be avoided. And since it is less profiting, it means I am saying copywriting is not profitable. So better you should go for patenting of your literary works, like your research activity. Don't just copyright your research work. You make, try to make it patentable so that your ideas get protected. In some cases, like literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work, which has been assigned to a publisher by the author, the author cannot claim any profit, which the publishers may be getting it from the business concern. So that is the problem with the copyright. If you assign your copyright to some publisher, then you won't get the benefit of the sale of the product. But in case of patent, no one can infringe in your ideas, your execution of ideas. So every time if, if anyone uh, publishes it or if anyone uses your technology or your idea to research because of the patent, which is called patent licensing, then he or she have to give you the money. So Copyright Act in India gives monopoly of its creation for 60 years, patent gives for 10 years. So similarly, we have design patents we'll discuss later. So in case the work is a creation or work of joint authorship, the author who dies last shall be considered as the reference point for calculating the term of 60 years. So for any protection of the copyright, it is Copyright Act is 1957. Then comes one important thing called computer software. Like computer softwares are any programs, uh, which may consist of computer programs, tables, compilations, which include computer databases. This can be registered also under Copyright Act 1957. For this, the owner or the developer, whosoever is applying for the copyright, have to give their source code in the copyright application. In case it is an open source, open source software, then ownership of the same will be determined by which has been stated in the agreement. An agreement will be made at that time. If it is open source, then the decision will be taken by the WIPO or Indian Patent Office. So suppose if an employee develops a software uh, where he uses, uh, uses employees' resources, then there is no agreement at all. In that case, employer will have this. Simply the employer will have the ownership. Employee cannot have the ownership. However, it is always advisable to assign the copyright of the open source software developed from a copyright software to a group of administrator who oversees the project so that complexity can be reduced later, like who should be the owner of the copyright. So now for getting an estimate of the cost involved in copyright registration and allied services, this is the link I will be sending to the slides. You can just click on it, you will get the complete idea of it. So under the broad classification of IPR, the industrial property is again, is a very broad idea. So this class is again having sub ideas like trademark, patent, layout design of integrated circuits, geographical indications, trade secrets and no high protection against abuse infringement of this intellectual property. This is the DPIIT website where you can find complete details of how to file a patent, how to get your patent registered, how to apply for the provisional patent for five years. And if it is a full patent at 20 years, what are the uh, procedures and formats where you can have the patent agents, where you can find patent attorney laws, uh, attorneys, patent attorneys. Uh, so uh, all these informations are in this DPIIT website. Now coming to the industrial property. So under the industrial property, we have this word called patent. So what is patent? It patent is the protection which is given under the law, under the international law for a limited period of time to an individual for inventing something new, okay? So novelty, utility, inventive steps, all are required to be informed in the format to the patent agent as a draft 
for checking and cross verifying whether your application is okay or it is viable for applying to patent uh, application so this patent application has to be with uh, very much have you need to have very much clarity and completeness of all the technical details in a, in a lucid style means the style should be simple to understand by layman and main purpose is that the patent information needs to be with public is to reduce the chances of duplications complexities later it is granted for 20 years for which a monopoly will be given to the inventor however it is used for not allowing the use of inventions then it will have it will obviously it will defeat the purpose of the patent so that the reason is advisable that if a patent holder does not exploit does not utilize or commercialize the patent at personal basis he or she should always license it for other industries so that they can use it for the productive purpose and for licensing don't afraid you will be getting the royalty as for the agreement you sign with the industries or any research laboratories or any 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 institutions which can use your patent for benefit of the uh, economy secondly in case of products are change a little bit which does not necessarily being a hell lot of changes in the same the product cannot be considered for patent suppose you are trying to make a product with some uh, not much of significant change and you are trying to make a patent and for and if the patent for the earlier product is available then your patent is not considered unless and until it should have a very significant changes in other words evergreening a patent by just bringing minor changes won't apply often for the purpose of protecting an invention what some people are doing they are taking the route of trade secret for which they do not disclose important information to the ipo indian patent office and can therefore protect the secret of the invention for infinite period without the danger of disclosing at the end of certain period of time so what they do it is a period of 20 years for some people are playing the game that they actually uh, instead of going for 20 years they try to make it for infinite years means for unlimited period but for what uh, for that purpose what they do they apply trade secrets and they inform ipo intellectual property office or international property office that these secrets cannot be divulged cannot be informed so in that way basically they do this patent for an infinite period of time like coca cola secret formula or page rank formula are of similar nature that's the reason coca cola's patent is for unlimited period of time because they say they have some secret formula which they cannot inform or they cannot make it public so protecting the trade secret is easier in many cases reverse engineering however fails to get the process as it is happening in case of google page rank so google rank in its patent application has mentioned number of signals and codes which they cannot disclose them in the patent application so they keep the rest as state secret therefore the chance of getting information public and being exploited by some party or organization at the end of the term 20 years is prevented so patent is very common pertaining to technological aspect however in our country any invention which is related to atomic energy cannot be patented now coming to the trademarks and domain so a trademark is defined by a shape mark device name signature brand a heading label word letter numerical shape of goods colors slogans individually or a combination of several of them which makes it unique and at aesthetic look capable of distinguishing the goods of one person or or one company from the others the basic utility of trademark is that it it protects the public form from confusion and deceptions on other hand protects the trademarks owners trademark and goodwill and business running smoothly in the long run so this can also be certification trademark they can be collective mark they can be composite mark they can be trademark of goods and services so all this comes under trademark act 1999 which helps in differentiating between the product which are based on quality material or manufacturer of the product so it helps in differentiating between low quality product and high quality product 
and these are being used by the authority supervising various sectors of business. For example, like India Organic, Agmark, FPO, ISI, these are all trademarks. These are typical example of certifications normally used by the organizations like APEDA, which is Agriculture and Processed Product Food Export Development Authority. It is also used by Agmark. It is used by Ministry of Food Processing, FPO, Bureau of Indian Standard, BIS, ISMR, Hallmark, Ecomark, Central Pollution Control Board of India, non polluting vehicle mark. So these are all certifications under trademark act. So then comes collective mark. So what is collective mark? So there is certain companies which want to get multiple trademarks for their subsidy because like some companies have many subsidiaries. So they want to have one mark which can be used by all of their subsidiaries. So like Tata, Tata has a one trademark and that is used by not only by Tata Motors, it means by Tata Steel, it will be used by Tata Airlines, it will be used by any Tata subsidiary, 84 Tata subsidiaries can use the Tata logo. So it is called collective. Then come composite marks. Composite marks are not, cannot be registered solely by combination of few words, but inducing the uniqueness uh, and distinguishing factors, okay? For example, the mark of McDonald's or click lawyer's mark are some of the examples of composite marks. So these are basically needed to be registered in a design form. So McDonald's, you can say KFC, Domino's. So these are called composite marks because their name have to be in the form of a design, not like Tata. Tata is a logo, so it's a trademark. But <clears throat> McDonald's and Clickworks, Domino's, any such company, KFCs, so their name is, has to be in a form of a design. So this is called composite mark. So we have trademark for goods and services. The list of these can be found from this website, which I will share with you. Then at the same page, uh, then come the, uh, in case of trademarks and domains, now coming to domain. Domains means like www.xyz.com. So such domains are nothing but the internet address of the website. So this can also be trademarked. Like uh, I have a company, my company's name is www.cosmosmindsglobal.com. So I have trademarked it under the name, under the domain name. So it will be registered uh, with IPO as a registered website. So there is no law for protection of domain name. However, the law of passing off can be used for to seek protection. Secondly, just like trademarks, which helps consumers to distinguish the product and services. So the orders of uh, like goodwill of the business, domain name also helps to distinguish their product and services with the name of the business. So it's always advisable, not only for the industries, but for the individual also. If you are, have, if you're going to do the business on net, that they should have the domain name registered at the start of the business so that any chance of cyber squatting or any star, any chance of uh, like uh, interference can be uh, minimized or can be avoided as it happens in the name of Dhoni also. Dhoni had a website and that was registered by uh, and one more Dhoni website was registered by some person called Mr. Henley in 2005. And few years after Dhoni started playing the international game, the domain names and that was basically confronting with Dhoni's original domain name and the domain name, you can say forged domain name registered by Mr. Henley. So this basically happens sometime if you don't register your domain names. So that's the reason used to protect your identity uh, you need, you should have the domain name at the start of the business or start of your operations. And this can be registered as per UDRP or INDRP. Uh, these, are, these are the portals. These are the basically the statutory portals which provide the domain names that can be registered and has no malefied intentions behind it. This is one of the most important for an academic institution because for research, during research, you need, will be confronting with many type of design. So designs also are getting protected in India by Design Act 2000 and protection can be extended to shapes. It may be three-dimensional 
and in configurations, pattern, ornaments, composition of lines or colors, which are used in an article. It may be two dimensional uh, cases also, or combination of one or more features of them. The only parameter which are being used for protecting or judging the design is that the feature of the object and the appearance should be just solely by the eyes and no other parameters will be used. Then comes the plant varieties. <clears throat> this is also part of for the academic institutions because a lot of researches are happening in terms of the uh, these varieties. Uh, so these are also protected uh, by the protection of plant varieties and Palmer's Act 2001, which enacted by the Article 27.3B of the TRIPS Act. TRIPS Agreement is the international agreement that is uh, uh, Intellectual Property Right Protection Act which makes it obligation upon the signatory countries, uh, there are uh, 151 countries are there, to protect the plant varieties through patent or a sui generis law in India. The sole motive of this to protect the right of the farmers, growers, producers, and the plant breeders who are involved with the development of new plant varieties in the country. So however, any plant to be protected by CEMEC, the plant should not be of the extent variety means a variety which exists for a long time, a farmer's variety or those varieties which are notified by section five of the Seeds Act. The subject matter should meet the conditions like novelty, stability, uniformity, and distinctiveness. And in some cases, the variety has also developed that too much long time, uh, not too much time ago. So any eligible person, individual can also submit the application for the same. This is one of the most important things, geographical indications, like you must be knowing, like Assam T, Assam Gamosa. So many other things are under geographic indications. To this is very important aspect of business, which normally is used to indicate the country or region of origin of the goods. So GI, as it's otherwise referred, is a sort of an identity of a good with the mere reference of which determines a class among the similar class of goods, for example, Darjeeling tea, Assam tea, or Sempeng, or Rockford cheese, or Porto, or Swiss watch. These are all geographic indications which indicates the origin of the country. So protection in India in the same can be done by geographical indications of goods that is comes under registration and protection at 1999. For example, like Banarasi Sari, all producers of the Banarasi uh, producing the same sari and maintaining the same quality can claim GI tag on the Banarasi saris. Now come another uh, important uh, intellectual property right called layout design of integrated circuits, which comes under Design Act 2000 and legislations provides that anyone who is registering a technical design, which comprises of the layout of the transistors, corresponding elements of circuits, lead wires, which connects with the same element or such elements and focused in a manner in the semiconductor integrated circuit can get a protection for 10 years from the date of filing of the registration and from the date of first commercial exploitation, whichever is earlier. So main purpose here is to support uh, the uh, integrated circuits development to provide protection even for a limited period also uh, for the innovators, with more innovations, it become possible to make that circuit, which is now, uh, which is always obviously used for the ICT, information communication technology, and also to provide better electronic products. And innovation, the long run, contributes to the economic growth. This we have already discussed how these companies use the trade secrets to have the patent not for 20 years, but for unlimited period of time. So, what is trade secret? So these are basically the confidential informations, which is very important to one's business or enterprise and may prove to be costly for the business in case the information is compromised with public or individual outside the business and enterprise and may totally affect or damage the business of the person who is the original owner of the same. So trade secrets are important aspect of any innovation. So during patent, uh, the trade secrets uh, comes into picture if you want to patent it for an unlimited period of time. Otherwise, if you don't have the trade secret, then patent is valid only for 20 years and you have to reapply for another extension of your patent. 
So one of the trade secrets should take utmost care to protect the secret. Otherwise, there's no need of no uh, need of this patenting because everything is public, then everything is lost, and should be never be shared with any other individuals who may be the employee of the business. They may prove injurious to the business in future. So following are some of the examples of trade secrets, like designs are trade secrets, drawings are trade secrets, architectural plans, algorithms like AI algorithms, whatever we are seeing nowadays, lots of development is happening in AI in terms of like ChatGPT4, BART, and many other things. So these are trade secrets in, in terms of the algorithms. The processes implemented in computer programming, teaching instructions, techniques, know-how, manufacturing processes, marketing plan, information related to research and development procedures can be termed as trade secrets. Like Google's page rank, Coca-Cola's, Pepsi's recipe, that we have many such uh, successful business in food industry, they have the recipe, these are all trade secrets. Then come the patent are basically divided into two parts. One is called product patent, another is called process patent. Product patent, you know that it is the final product is granted a protection. Whereas process patent is always be a like utility patent, which is not applicable in our country. Where many people are fighting for this, many organizations fighting for this. I also had a chance to fight against this, uh, uh, for not against basically for proposing to the government to uh, allow utility patent in India through Maharashtra uh, Law University, which is in Mumbai. So I had also, uh, uh, provided uh, input, which was published in their journal. So this is basically is available in many countries, but in India, we don't have utility patent. And this is specifically the process patent. So developed and developing countries follow different type of, different way of patenting. Like our country only have product patent, and some country it may be having both. So process patent are easier to get since by means of reverse engineering, by TRIJ, T-R-I-Z method, you can use this, but it is not applicable in India. So uh, if you discuss also, it's not useful. Uh, otherwise, you have to apply this uh, process patent in some other countries, intellectual property. That also possible, I will discuss later. So now coming to patent filing. So patent filing should be known to every academic institution now as per the NEP 2.0 and they should have the facility in sale through research and development sale to provide uh, support and assistance to researchers, faculty members and students to go for the patent filing. And patent filing is uh, now subsidized for startups and MSCs. <clears throat> what were the incurred cost in patent filing that will be returned back by the government. So uh, patent application processes is the most important process. And for this, you need to be in touch with the patent agents. These are the authorized uh, person of the government of India uh, for the patent purpose. So you have to approach any patent agent in your locality, means Assam, we have we, we, we will be having patent agent and to get the details, you need to visit the office of, uh, you need to visit the website of uh, Indian Patent Office. India Patent Office, once website you visit, you can see the list of patent agents and list of patent attorneys. Uh, from there, you can select, you can be in touch with them, and you have to complete your application drafting uh, using the help of patent agent. Then only you can apply for patent. So uh, these are some of the patent drafting process where you, the, you can also start with individually at your place. It should contain title of the invention field of invention, background of inventions, and object of invention, your statement of invention, summary of invention, a brief description of the company drawing, detailed description of the invention with claims to drawings with examples, claims, and abstract. So PCT is basically, I will, I will discuss in this coming slide. PCT again follows somewhat different form of patent. Through PCT, basically you can apply patent in any country. You are not supposed to apply in India only. You can apply patent in any other country. Like process patent is not available in India. So you can apply <clears throat> to any country who has the pet process patent, utility patent facility. For this PCT has a different formats. So under US, US PTO, which also follows a different format, US in the United States Patent Office, 
You can also apply at United States Patent Office. You are not uh, debarred from that. You are open to any apply any patent to any 151 countries who are the signatories. So this happens only through PCT. So what is PCT? <clears throat> I will discuss because all drafting process. PCT stands for Patent Cooperation Treaty. So it is an international patent treaty that has been concluded in 1970 and was effective in 1978. And its aim is to protect patents across several jurisdictions, several countries, by means of single patent application made in any one jurisdiction. Means suppose you apply a patent in India, then through PCT, if you apply through PCT, then your patent is protected in all the signatory countries. So what is PCT and how to get a patent through PCT? So for this, the main purpose of the union is to make sure that a single window system has to be there for 151 contracting state or signatory countries without a need to apply for protection in several countries simultaneously. So there will be one unified fees, which is another key aspect. And by making a single payment, one can apply for a patent, which by again saving time, and it will be protected in all 151 countries. So the application of this patent can be made in any of the patent office, including India, where which needs to be filed once the patent application is made in a national patent office like India in Kolkata for, for the Eastern region, <clears throat> automatically it will be considered as if the same application has been made to all the national offices of 151 countries simultaneously. So in case patent application has been filed in any country, which is part of any of the following conventions, then your patent will be part of all these conventions simultaneously, like European Patent Convention, Eurasian Patent Convention, Bangui Agreement, Harare Protocol, under PCT can be made respective offices like European Patent Office, Eurasian Patent Office, African Intellectual Property Right Office, American Regional Intellectual Right Office simultaneously. Now, how to do a patent search? But because, because before drafting, you need to also make a search so that your patent, uh, your application should not uh, contradict with others or, the, or sometimes it happens that the patent has already been filed and registered. So you should not uh, uh, again try to make that. For this, you need to visit this website. Uh, this uh, blue link uh, or will go with the PPT and you can just click on and find out. Or otherwise, otherwise, you can search your patent through a single website called Patent Scope. <clears throat> Just uh, type Patent Scope, and there you uh, type your subject. If anything related to your subject has been patented, then you should avoid that, or you should try to make some changes and provide it to the patent present for filing and drafting. Now, how to prepare IP for huh? Now, coming to the important thing. Now, once your institution starts uh, establishing research and development sale, the most important thing as per new education policy is that you need to have uh, uh, that intellectual property policy at your institute. So how to prepare that IP policy? Because without IP policy, if you start with the incubation, if you start with the RDC also, you will finding lots of problem in terms of patent filing and patent drafting, okay? And to, key, and to save time and to make it more useful and reliable for the industries also to partner with you, research institutions to partner with you, international education body to partner with you, you need to prepare yourself a call an institution-based IP policy. So university research institutions who needs, who wants to seek partner with industry, any organizations, they need to have IP, otherwise other industry or other institution won't approach you because your policy will be giving them a uh, giving them confidence that you have the structure you have the you have the predictability you have the beneficial environment in which commercial activity like industrial sponsorship consultancy non profit organizations coming to picture small and micro enterprise governments will take interest and research stakeholders like your researchers your technicians your students your visiting researchers can also access and share the knowledge technology and ip so it has to be a formal document, which basically should consider yes. and consist of ownership of and right to use the IP, procedure for identification, evaluation, protection, and management of IP of your institute, procedure for cooperation with third parties for licensing, guidelines for the sharing of profits from successful commercializations, which is part of NRF, and mechanism to ensure 
for respect for the third party IP rights. So main goals, why IP policy is required in your institution once you go for the establishment of research and development sale is that it provides your institutional legal certainty. It provides you to promote scientific research and technological developments. You, you have the policy to encourage your researchers to consider possible opportunities for exploiting and innovations and inventions so as to increase the potential flow of benefits. It will provide an environment in your institution which may be called innovative and entrepreneurial mindset environment that supports and encourages innovation development in the institution and a locality nearby your institution. It balances various conflicting interests of universities, industries, and societies at large. Also, it will ensure compliances with applicable national laws and regulations. So this was uh, what my uh, say today. And this is a very interesting subject, obviously, for researchers and faculty members, because this will provide you a total uh, aspect of new education policy. Now, I think everyone have understood that how broad and wide the new education 2.0 is. It is not just uh, with few things like it will be four degree course, no MPhil, uh, then, uh, then the academic bank of credit and you have to uh, go for multilingual languages, then uh, your, the institution should have the uh, vocational course of 30%. These are the basics, but advances, it focuses on entrepreneurship, it focuses on research and citations, it focuses on intellectual property rights so that our institutions can be world-class, they can be ranked at par in world university ranking like Shanghai ranking, then uh, QS ranking, THC ranking, not only NIRF, but we have to go for international ranking so that we can rub our soldiers with the Ivy League universities and institutions globally. So these are the basics when I <clears throat> share this 128 slides with you, you just go through it. You'll find it very interesting and very, very, uh, uh, you can say absorbing also that how the whole policy is thinking a lot about the institutional revamping and a uh, and you can say a paradigm shift in the way we are teaching, we are doing research and we are doing innovations. And uh, out of all these three, one more new uh, thing has come up that is called NETF, that is called New Education Task Force. We will, we will discuss later on if you're interested that gives a total Total gamut of frameworks for applying NEP to achieve the important uh, seven pillars of new education policy. And then we are having some audit services where it is easier for any institution to understand the importance and also uh, help them to understand how to uh, go for uh, setting these research sales, how to go for uh, having this IP policy how to have the uh, governance structure, how to have the concept of digital university is also part of NEP 2.0, how we can go for inclusivity and diversity of our institutions so that all the activities should fall into uh, that uh, economies of knowledge and knowledge has to be transformed so that uh, it can be tangible, it, it should have the commercial value for the benefit of the economy at large. So now if you have any questions, so I'm open for that uh, so that I can answer this or otherwise, uh, once you get this PPT slides, you please connect with uh, Dr. Minal Ghos and he can, uh, he can uh, provide me the questionnaires and I will answer accordingly. Uh... Yeah. Thank you, sir, for uh, enriching us with a very informative and interesting presentation. Thank you once again. The session is open now for discussion. If there is any question, the participants can directly ask to our resource person.
uh, sir the session was quite interesting one uh, so uh, the thing the way you have disseminated all the information regarding patent and uh, copyright uh, all these things were very much uh, uh, very much uh, interesting i had one query regarding uh, the traditional items of northeast india what kind of protection uh, this uh, traditional uh, textile items be it, or be it the bhut cholokia this kind of items uh, they uh, enjoy bhut uh, cholokia already has enjoyed gi tag okay geographical indication tag uh, they similarly sathebari uh, brass act uh, brass means uh, act means uh, the war oh, brass, uh, okay so uh, but the uh, number of gi tag which is happening in north in assam is very less and for this uh, the academic institution have to play very very important role because this cannot be applied as an individual okay this has to apply to uh, some organized form a uh, gi tag and uh, uh, related to other traditional activities see the patent is not uh, allowed for those things which are happening naturally okay natural things are not uh, given any patent so uh, but some traditional uh, way of uh, agriculture agriculture activity traditional way of uh, producing some uh from some products okay or traditional way of healing someone uh, like like medicines and all if it uh, this can be uh, this can be go for patenting but provided you need to have the detailed understanding of how uh, patent filing is to be made and uh, for this some websites are given there and i will also share some website like how to check whether uh, uh mean not to check whether it can be patented but to check like uh, with how uh, means whether it is applicable for patent or not otherwise if patent is not possible then the best thing is that we should go for uh, copyright i mean uh, uh, copywriting also is okay if we go for it but we need to be very careful because infringement in copyright is more and infringement in patent is not possible Uh, but gi tag is obviously it is, it is it is given only for that purpose so if you go for the traditional thing uh, a traditional produces not uh, uh, like uh, as i said no bhot jole kiya kagji nemo so these are this can be tagged uh, turmeric then morana the this can be tagged uh, but if someone has tagged then obviously you won't be allowed to tag it again so what more uh, means uh, much earlier means we have to act early we have to act early we, we should not be late in that like we cannot tag uh, turmeric it has always been tagged uh, by someone outside india so those things happen because we will be late in that process thank you sir so one more thing uh, that is which is not directly related to patent uh, uh, filing or copyright filing the thing is uh, related to the nac uh, assessment and how the college can um, acquire maximum marks uh, under that mm. the thing is that you have uh, uh, you have conducted many sessions with colleges colleges and many universities so you know uh, well that uh, uh, that there is a provision of getting marks uh, for ipr if the college conducts any kind of ipr uh, workshop or seminar so apart from that uh, is there any kind of provision or any kind of uh, any way through which a college can acquire marks by uh, through uh, through uh, uh, ipr intellectual property rights uh you can have some workshop okay not only webinar seminar if you have the workshop also on ipr no that that also uh, gives good marks means uh, you have to uh, uh, you have to have some physical workshops in your now because nowadays it is open no so physical workshop can be you should uh, actually hold held in your institution by calling uh, someone from ipo india intellectual property office or anyone from the industries and you try to uh, make some workshop demonstration of the uh, product because we don't have process uh, patent here as i told you so some product patenting uh, workshop you can have and I, at the, at the end of the workshop at least you, you can deliver it to the uh, to the public public at large with the government bodies or the certifying certifying agencies that we did this and this is the result that we can go for patent of such type of product in coming days 
workshop is not that, that you will be patenting something, but workshop will be helping your faculty, researchers, and students to understand the whole process step by step. And they will also come with a lot of ideas. And these ideas can be put in records uh, so that you can use those ideas later on for suppose applying or trying to uh, file uh, file with the patent agent. So workshop basically gives more point than just uh, having uh, seminars or webinars uh, where the students only participate, but their participation has to be on from uh, both the sides, from the participants and from the people who are basically organizing this. So uh, I think you should also go for workshop. One or two works of one academic year is sufficient. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And for this, if you need any help, then I have very good connect with IP Office Kolkata. Okay. Then I will also ask them. They do this free of cost for the academic institutions. Okay. Okay, okay sir. They will come to your college and they will uh, do the workshop. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think there is no more query from the participant side. Thank you once again, sir. Now, I would like to request to Dr. Meghali Bora, head of the Department of Commerce, to confer vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon to all. I respect the principal of Gorgon College, Dr. Harbahasi Mohanta. Respected resource person of three days seminar series, Dr. Panjal Kumar Fukan, distinguished faculty members and esteemed participants. It gives me immense pleasure to extend the vote of thanks on behalf of the organizing committee for the three day seminar on NEP 2020 and NRF, and a way towards self reliant India and IPR. At the outset, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Panjal Kumar Fukan, the resource person of this seminar for his enlightening and thought-provoking thought sessions. His vast knowledge, experience, and insight on the topics have indeed been a valuable addition to the seminar. I would like to offer my sincere gratitude to Dr. Sarbahasi Mohanta sir, the principal of Gorgam College for his continuous support and encouragement for these kinds of academic programs. I would like to express my gratitude to the esteemed faculty members of Gorgon College and other institutions for their active participation and valuable con contribution throughout the seminar. Their valuable inputs, questions, and discussion have helped to enhance the quality and depth of the seminar. Furthermore, I would like to extend my heartful appreciation to the students who participated in this seminar. Your active participation and engagement have made this seminar a success. Your interest in the topics discussed and your insightful questions and comments have undoubtedly enriched the discussion. Lastly, I would like to express my gratitude to the organizing committee members, including the IQAC coordinator, Dr. Surajit Shekia, uh, for their tireless efforts in planning and executing this seminar. Their dedication, commitment, and hard work have contributed to the success of the seminar. Once again, I thank everyone for their contribution to this seminar and look forward to future events where we can collaborate and share our knowledge and insight. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bora. Uh, the session, I, I declare that the session is over now.